gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's just past six, so uh, let's crack on. Um, while I get my paperwork in order, if you'll excuse me for a second. First item on, first item on the agenda, apologies for absence. Other than those that have already been noted, I might add. Um, no. Second item on the agenda, declarations of interest. Has any parties got any, um, anything to declare uh, appertaining to the agenda tonight? Uh, I'm sorry, Jean, could you just... Agenda item 6, yeah. on that with the fire authorities will have to be declared in interest. Could I be asked to leave the room?
organization of Office 10 in 2013, and all the debates about men's equipment, that's all come and gone. So we need to find indicators that remain useful. And one that I've noticed and is relevant to business in, um, is the issue of suppliers paying and payment terms within 30 days, which used to be an old indicator. Our uh, local SME suppliers paid within 10 days. Now, I'm not sure where they've gone now, but they seem to me to be relevant <coughs> to your particular scrutiny committee. Some members have been very determined and dogged in fine following themes that have cropped up at various scrutiny committees and not to do the business of this one. If I mention the words appraisals, then I'm sure that will ring a bell in some members' uh, experience. Because if I go back to 2014, the council had a target of getting 80% of appraisals done in that year. And during the year, it had a year in August of 25%. And I know that that, for example, has been a running theme that has interested members over several years. And the second aspect of that is the accuracy of data. As we did for years, follow sickness and absence data by staff. And that data turned out to have some difficulties in collection of laws, which meant that that statistic uh, wasn't that useful until it was totally revised. So the next thing is to have statistics that remain relevant, are accurate, and can be accessed. Now, of course, I noticed on your agenda there's the statistics about increase the volume percentage of people cycling, which is dear to my heart, but I know from the numbers of counters we've got in the world, things like that, increased counting devices, that Having more counting devices affects what the result turns out to be, but because it's increasing, I'm delighted in that one. And the one that comes to your committee, which puzzles me because it's you and not environment, might be, and which is concerned for safety reasons, is the statistic about the plan to reduce the number of people killed or seriously injured in road accidents. And of course, the direction of wind <coughs> says lower is better, and so we all say amen to that. But I want to make a plea before I and that is the accessibility of information to members. So <coughs> about having these under the reports that relate to the scrutiny committees, and it's all very well us knowing that we've got to search under a particular scrutiny committee to find it, to remember where it was. Now, I think last night and tonight and for the future is that when the spokespersons meet, they develop a way of it being readily accessible without the search. In my email on Monday, I referred to both Barnet and <coughs> Stockport when there was a data performance page. Our officers reminded me last night about Will's data performance page on the website. You have to go through about six steps before you find it, because you have to increase the number of committees on the first screen. You then have to go to the one about the council, and you have to trace it within that one. And then it's all about the current Will plan. What I would make clear is for a set of data can carry through time and remain relevant. And on the issue of time and relevance uh, and accessibility of websites, I just make this uh, comparison, which I'm sure Councillor Jerry Williams will enjoy. There's an organisation called the Historic Society of Lancashire and Cheshire. And for those of us who are dogged and go into that website, you can read copies of their reports and studies by our members for the last hundred and odd years. And it is, and it's easily accessible because you only have to click a few buttons to search by author, subject, period, and what you want to find. So if we are developing, improving that data that members want to refer to, then my please make it easy to find, easy to follow, and something that members want to grasp and follow through. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you, and thank you for your brevity. Um, I can see hands up. I think we would all echo around this table the sentiments of everything that, that Phil has enunciated. So, do we need, if, you, come, if you really want to, Ron?
had recently we had a very we had a very good workshop built on, on all of this. So all the officers are aware, and you go into the three committees to reiterate what you're saying and make the officers even more aware. But I think we we've got no problem with um, with making the recommendation here and uh, to support this this notice of motion. And a further, a further meeting of the chairs, the vice chairs and spokespersons would be welcome to consider feedback from the scrutiny committees on the presentation and contents of performance data. Are we all in agreement with that? Is there a Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thank you very much.
Now I'm going to leave it there, Chris, because you have made your point. Well, and it is a no, Chris. There's another Chris, valid point to make, Chair. But okay. okay. Well, I'll tell you what. If you've got another valid point to make, yeah. okay. Thank you, Chair. It's just that you know I hear what you're saying. Why don't you send me out there? I'm not more comfortable with that. But you have to remember this notice of motion was moved to to a council in October. And if it had been here by that council in October, we wouldn't have been waiting for further information. Okay, point taken. John? Yeah, just uh, asking for uh, information. Chairman, I take it when we do come to the table, uh, we're going to take the amendment to the three of them. Yes, yes. Is that okay then? It's going to January's committee meeting. Yes. yes? Thank you. Item number six. Um, treating all residents fairly and equitably. This notice of motion was brought by yourself, Chris. So if you'd Jen. like to. Jen, I'm leaving. Thanks, Jean. If you'd like to stay where you are, Chris, and the um, floor's yours. Thank, thank you, Jen. I'm not going to take up too much time because I think the notice of motion says everything. Again, if we're going to be fair, if this council is going to be fair with all these residents, then it must be seen to be fair, not just say it's fair. And here we have an example where, uh, this is one example, I could talk about money being spent in other places and nothing, nothing more for us, so we must get covered through the whole history. I could talk about the recent Burke Men's Fair, the Neptune Development New Drive, and the Euro uh, Tool, uh, etc., etc. But I'm not going to. Colin on 
talking about. It's not an amendment. It's simply saying single phase. It's a proposed vote. That's fine. Dave. Thank you, Chair. Just for clarity, I heard Councillor Blakely say at the end that he changed the recommendation to we're the unsupported. Now, which one are we going for? No, I'm sorry. No, you, just, you just stated the way we should be on support. I wrote it down. Should be supported. Fully supported. Fully supported. Fully supported, Dave. I, this motion should be fully supported. I apologise. I didn't hear this motion. Sorry, that's okay. I thought he was objecting against your recommendation, Dave. No, I'm this, glad is glad to my, this is an amendment to my recommendation. Oh, right. I'm glad I've got clarification. And did we, for clarity, excuse me. I have a second of the or I thought I saw you speaking in the second of the or Right. Right, I've got a second. So we'll vote on the amendment first. Chair, can I have a point of information first? Certainly. I'm confused. Is the amendment this? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. For clarity, let me just, for clarity, <coughs> Chris Blakely's amendment is to support this motion in its entirety. That is not, I've made a, I've made a counter recommendation which we're going to vote on in a minute. But at the moment, we're voting on this motion as it stands. That's, that's, Chris, Chris wants a vote and that's what we're having now, basically. Is everybody okay with that? Can we have the vote please? Those in favor of Chris's, Chris's um, motion.
um, that's something which we would do um, from data that was sent to DGPP as part of our audit and your audit and grant claim. Um, so that, that information would provide a baseline. Um, the tool that we would then be using is something which is being tested across many councils, used by the DGPP, um, many, many organisations, HMRC, um, to actually populate, if you like, the risk groups. So we look at the case load, break it down and say where those risks required to do to satisfy auditors in terms of using something like this. It can be a manual process. I can't say that might work, but it doesn't have to be um, based on using um, software. It's to sample on a monthly basis the outcomes. Um, so what we would be actually doing is um, processing the claims and then we go back and taking samples of them, which would be required to report back to the DPP in terms of whether or not there was subsequent error found in those cases. We might follow up with this. <coughs> much following the implementation in that particular audit, but it could be six months later to see if changes are coming in. So there's a constant process of testing the risk categories and testing the outcomes, which we're obliged to basically sign up to if we're going to do this. We don't do that, that is a requirement um, in terms of external audit as well, so we don't do that, we, you know, we'll be a breach of what we're obliged to do there. Chris? <coughs> Thank you. 
software to be used by the benefit service. But at the same time, the line of profit says it will be a cost of 33,000 per annum for the duration of the contract. So how long would the contract be for? Well, and given the university credit, that yes. is going to be ongoing? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's quite a difficult one to answer that because at the moment we're not seeing a huge impact of the university credit. Um, we are seeing cases moving off um, housing benefit, not to universal credit, but what we're also witnessing is there's a lot of working class of the local authority service still in that happening because people want to go on universal credit to change the circumstances. They may still be on council tax, you know, paying council tax support. Um, so we haven't got um, a completed rollout share. So we would be looking for it, I would say, a period of between two and maximum five years. Thank you. To try and reflect that uncertainty. Yeah. Thank you. See if you have a question. Okay. Phil, do you mind? Thank you for your indulgence, Ted. Just a reminder of Chris's question. Um, you've given me the impression that this system is being run and you've spoken with the properties I need to be. Have they noticed via something any increase in fraudulent activity after adopting this scheme? And secondly, arising from David's question, does universal credit, when it's properly rolled out, mean that this program is no longer needed? If that's the case, are we confident we can withdraw ourselves from it without any more costs? Yes, I'm trying to do so. Yeah. Um, okay, second, the second part of the question, um, in terms of universal credit, we still have the non-working age to consider. Um, once the working age is uh, fully rolled out and we come to mass migration. So there would still be a requirement, um, potentially a lesser requirement, depending on, on where those risk groups sat, but we would still have a service at this moment in time anyway. Um, just interesting, the universal credit will be using the same process to verify the claims. So we're not sort of taking going off on a tangent and looking at something that um, the and um, it was, it was, it was, it was whether or not all the local authorities in the community have seen the increase in fraud and activity that have been in this scheme. So you think it's only right and wrong all this is through the Yeah. Um, I don't think that there isn't any evidence to suggest that there's an increase in fraud. Um, what DPP are doing is they've, they've actually targeted local authorities and all says that anybody in this has to benefit to reduce the amount of fraud in their um, I suppose we call it error as opposed to fraud because you know, we, we're also looking at the scopes here. Yeah. Um, but in terms of baseline. I see you saying that, but I mean fraud in particular. Uh, right, so the increased prevalence of errors is a different question. Right. Um, is, is there been any evidence of increase in fraud in the local authority using this system? Not as far as I'm aware.
strategy. Um, Jeanette Royal, please. Would you come up here, Jeanette, please? And sit next to Alvin. Thank you. Jeanette is going to do a presentation from the podium. I've just been told. I've just been told. Thanks, Jeanette. Area we use that we have um, to highlight. 